when you're mapping out your shadows, the first thing you have to think about is whether or not you want to do it just the standard method. And this is the standard method. You choose either the left or the right side of everything and as your shadow side. So, and at a 45 degree angle, you map everything in. And the beautiful thing about it is that you can begin to talk about how deep or how high or how thick something is just by the length and depth of the shadow. So this is shallow, but the cabinetry is thicker. So this shadow has more depth, has, is a little bit wider. And it follows the standard method. Though you have your penumbra, of course, and then you have a little bit shadow here. If it's shadow on the right-hand side, it's on the right-hand side of everything. So on the there and and you're always keeping in mind of course your geometric shapes anything that falls on form you follow the classic geometric shapes to give what you need there so again everything is all our shadows are on the right side and underneath because the light is always from above so that will help choosing it that way you're not talking about any of the light sources in the room particularly it's just unifying your your image by selecting the same side for all of your shadows. This time you choose a light source and in this case it's the center and as you can see I've used that point and lined it up with the corners of everything and found the shape of my shadows that way. And if my shadows are this way on the wall, then they're going to be here. Now this is a wall shadow but you, you only extend it to a certain degree. You don't want your whole drawing to be shadow, so you just put it a certain amount. Also, if the light is coming from here, then this side of the tub isn't getting light, but that side is. But you still need to indicate that this has depth. So in your floor plans and elevations, you have the excitement of showing your materials, but you also have the responsibility of talking about um, how each objects relate one to the other and also to give them form. This, for example, is shallow and the wall is, of course, very thick. I didn't do the whole extent of the wall. I might put the shadow of the wall, I'll begin it with marker, but I'll finish it off with pencil crayon so that it just gradually ends up the length I want it. So in this case, I'm using the, the actual light fixture in the room. In this case, I'm using the light fixture that's in the room. It's in the center of the room. But what's happening here is that the light is hitting the floor in between the bed and in between the chaise. So the chaise being closer to us, it's not getting the light on this side. But it is getting light here, and the bed is all lit up because the, it's behind the light. Remember how the light hits the floor, and that's how we make our shadows. And this is getting light. But this is rolling away, so there's a little bit of shadow there. This bedroom now, I've chosen a, a light source outside the room, the sun outside the room. So I wanted this mullion to cast a shadow. So I've just done that very same thing. I've taken that point and drawn it from the mullion and extended it out, and I've taken it from the side of the window and extended it out. And this can be quite beautiful. If you have an arc on the top of your window, something you all know I love, then you could show that shape on the floor. So you'd put this first beginning part in your marker and then use your pencil crayon to draw it out as far as you want it to go. In nowadays, with whole walls being window with just some struts in between, it's gorgeous to see the light streaming in and the shadow just gradually moving across the whole open space. So just taking that point to the corner of everything, I was able to find all my shadows. And it's just consistent, which is a requirement. Your floor plans and elevations are meant to clarify the situation, and that's what this will help to do. This looks a little overwhelming, but what it is, it's all my grays from one to five. One, three, five in cool grays and one, three, five in my French grays. If I take this color and go over the whole chart, I can see that um, 
this may be too dark, this is too dark, this isn't dark enough. So, and this is a warm gray. This works better. So this is one instance where a warm color looks better with a warm gray underneath, not a cool gray. That's too cool. You can resolve it, though, by putting a second coat, but it still changes the color a little bit. Here, this even works, but in I could put a second coat, and that somehow retains the warmth. This changes it a little bit to a warm color, but this, this is all you have. That's what you would use, and you would put a double coat here. But the grays that I showed you are too dark. They're a number three. They'd be your number three, but I wanted them to be dark enough for you to see them. So when you're mapping out your shadows to begin with, I would map them out with a one rather than a three. And then as you do your particular colors, if you had a carpet, you'll see if this was the color of your carpet, that's not going to do a thing. So you would have to maybe put another coat of gray before you put your color in order for it to work.